Hello friends, in this video lecture we are going to discuss numerical on load flow. So let us begin. Friends, in our previous discussions we have seen what is load flow studies in the power system. We have seen the objectives of the load flow studies that is nothing but the finding out the four quantities at different points in the power system and those four quantities were voltage, real power, reactive power and the phase angle at the various point. It is required to have the smooth control on the power system. We need to have the knowledge of these four things and this can be obtained with the help of the load flow studies. That is what the importance of the load flow studies in the power system. Again, we have discussed the various methods of solving the load flow studies. We have seen the gauss seidel method, we have seen the newton raphson method, again we have seen the decoupled load flow method, we have seen the fast decoupled load flow method. Further more methods are there, but we have discussed up to fast decoupled load flow method. Now, in this lecture, we will solve one numerical on load flow study. It will give us the idea regarding how the load flow studies are carried out in the power system. So let us first read the question. Question says a 3 bus power system is shown in the below figure. Uh, the 3 bus power system is shown here. You can see that in this figure. This is bus 1, this is bus 2 and this is the bus 3. The relevant per unit admittances on 100 MVA base are indicated on the diagram. You can see here one important thing is mentioned here the base MVA is mentioned here okay see these admittances which are indicated here that is the admittance of the line connected between bus 1 and 2 it is given here it is minus J3 again the admittance of the line which is connected between bus 1 and 3 is given minus J4 and the admittance of the line which is connected between bus 3 and 2 it is given as minus j5. So these admittances are being mentioned or been given in terms of the per unit values okay and those are calculated on the base of this 100 MV okay and the bus data are given in the table okay again the table is also given here you can see the table okay. So here what we have to do is form the y bus and determine the voltage at bus 2 and bus 3 after the second iteration using gauss seidel method. Again, it is given here, take the acceleration factor alpha is equal to 1.6. Okay, so we have to use the acceleration factor in this case. We have seen what is acceleration factor and how we can use this acceleration factor. Okay, so basically, firstly, what we have to do is we have to form the Y bus matrix for this power system that is the first part of this problem and secondly we have to find out the voltage at bus 2 and bus 3 this is the bus 2 so we need to find out V2 okay so voltage at this bus 2 we will indicate it with V2 again we have to find out the voltage at bus 3 that is nothing but V3 and we have to solve this V2 and V3 for uh, two iteration okay because it is asked to calculate the value after the second iteration so we have to carry out this calculation for two iterations okay so let us see what data is given in the uh, table the bus number column bus 1 bus 2 bus 3 it is a three bus system type it is mentioned here okay see the first bus obviously it will be a slack bus okay a slack bus or a reference bus okay uh, what is the significance of this slack bus or the reference bus we have already discussed the slack bus or the reference bus whatever will be there in the power system the generators which are connected on this bus you can see here uh, one generator is connected over here for this first bus so these generators they are supposed to supply the losses in the transmission network okay so initially before we 
solve the load flow on the power system we don't have idea regarding the losses in the system okay so the power supplied by this generator is calculated at the end of the load flow problem okay and accordingly the generation is decided for the generator which is there on the reference bus basically in power system in practical power system we don't have such type of the numberings so what is done practically the bus where we are having the maximum generation or the where the largest generator is connected we consider that bus as slack bus or reference bus okay so as the generations in the beginning we don't have the idea of the generation so it is given here as a question mark okay we do the calculation at the end of the load flow but here it is not asked to calculate okay so we don't need to bother about these two things again you can see that on the first bus load is not connected so that is why load part that is the real part and the reactive part is zero for the slack bus this is decided for the slack bus the voltage we keep the voltage constant on the slack bus okay it is mentioned here it is specified here specified in terms of the per unit okay vpu it is given and the angle is also specified here it is in terms of degree so 1.02 per unit voltage value is given for the this reference bus or the slack bus again the second bus there is a generator is connected okay again load is also connected this yellow line is indicating load here it is a load okay so when in the power system if the load and generation both are connected on the bus oftenly that bus is referred as a pq bus okay so on the pq bus we know that we have the idea of regarding the real power and the reactive power okay so for the second bus generation it is 25 megawatt that is the real part and 15 mvr that is the reactive part this is regarding the generation and this is regarding the load okay there is a demand of 50 megawatt real power and there is a demand of 25 mvar reactive power okay voltage we have to find out v2 it is asked to find out okay so again with the voltage we will get the idea regarding the phase angle as well now come to the third bus here it is a pq type of bus okay as the generator is not connected on this third bus so generation will be zero over here and the demand will be there because load is connected on the third bus so that load is 60 megawatt there is a demand real power demand and 30 mvar reactive power demand is there okay so again we have to find out the voltage at this bus that is the v3 we have to find okay so let us solve this problem solution okay now uh, one important point we have to take care here is that the admittances are given in terms of the per unit and the base is also mentioned here but you see here the powers real power and reactive powers they are mentioned in actual values they are not mentioned in terms of the per unit so let us first convert these actual values in the per unit values okay so that we will get the voltage at bus 2 and bus 3 in terms of per unit only okay in the power system we take or we do calculations in per unit system only okay because it has advantage over using actual values okay so let us first convert the real power on the bus 2 and bus 3 in terms of per unit value then reactive power on bus 2 and bus 3 okay so let us do for bus 2 at bus 2 i am calculating see this p2 i want to find it out in terms of the per unit so here generation is there demand is there generation i am taking as positive and demand that is the load i am taking it as negative so resultant we will get here so this will be the actual value okay since p2 is indicating the real power injected at bus 2 
okay so that we will get by taking the addition of these two that is the generation and the uh, load okay and this we will divide with the base mva so here pg is 25 and pl is 50 let us divide this with 100 so we will get it has minus 0 0.25 per unit okay again q2 it will be reactive power generation minus reactive power demand divided by base mva okay its value is uh, 15 and 25 15 minus 25 divided by 100 it is minus 0 0.10 per unit okay now let us do for bus 3 so we will get p3 it will be like pg minus pl at bus 3 we will divide that with the base mva so pg is 0 here and pl is 60 so it will be 0 minus 60 divided by 100 so it will be 0 0.60 per unit next q3 it will be qg minus ql divided by base mva so here qg is 0 ql is 30 so 0 minus 30 divided by 100 we will get so it will be like 0 0.30 per unit so we have converted the real and reactive powers in per unit values okay now let us find out the y bus for this power system okay before we actually find out the value of this y bus let us first decide the order of this y bus okay you can see that this is a three bus system okay so number of buses here is three so with that the order of this y bus it will be a three by three matrix okay so i'm going to write this y bus matrix with the help of direct inspection method okay that method is also being discussed with you now to find out the first element that is y11 okay so first let us write which elements we have to find for we need y11 y12 y13 then y21 y31 y22 y23 then y32 y33 okay now we will do this one by one okay directly we will write it in the matrix so y11 okay it is nothing but summation of the admittances connected at bus 1 okay it will be summation of the admittances connected at bus 1 so you can see here the two lines are connected here that is the line having admittance minus j3 and the line having admittance minus j4 so if i add both of them so it will become minus j3 minus j4 so it will give us the result as minus j7 then we have y12 it will be negative of the admittance connected between bus 1 and 2 okay so look for the bus 1 and 2 this is bus 1 and 2 admittance in between these two is minus j3 so we have to take the negative of this okay this is as for the direct inspection method so i can write here it as j3 okay likewise if we find y13 y13 it will be the negative of the admittance connected between bus 1 and 3 it is minus j4 so if i take negative of this it will become j4 only okay so it will become plus j4 okay see these things will repeat here it will be j3 and it will be j4 okay why because y12 is same as y21 because the admittance between 
बस वन एंड टू इज सेम एस द एडमिटेंस बिटवीन बस टू एंड वन ओके सो दिस एंट्रीज विल बी सेम नाउ वी हैव टू फाइंड फॉर वाई टू टू इट विल बी द समीशन ऑफ द एडमिटेंस इज कनेक्टेड एट बस टू इट विल बी माइनस जे थ्री एंड माइनस जे फाइव सो इट विल गिव अस माइनस जे एट सो वी विल गेट हियर माइनस जे एट आई राइट द रिमेनिंग एंट्रीज यू कैन वेरीफाइड फ्रॉम द फिगर सो हियर we will get j5 so same entry will come here j5 and lastly y33 we will get here minus j9 we will get here so this is the y bus for the given power system it is a 3 by 3 matrix this is the part 1 of this problem now we have to do the calculation with the help of the gauss seidel method and we have to find out v2 and v3 okay so as per the gauss seidel method the voltage at any bus at any iteration we can find out with the help of this formula vk r plus 1th iteration it is equal to 1 upon ykk in the bracket it will be pk minus jqk divided by vk voltage at the same bus but in the earlier iteration and we have to take the conjugate of that okay then we have here minus summation i going from 1 to k minus 1 okay because we are finding for kth bus so first term will be up to k minus 1 okay here it will be y k i into v i in r plus 1th iteration because we will be having the idea of the voltages up to this bus okay up to the k minus 1th bus we will be having current iteration okay minus now this i will have the range of k plus 1 up to the last bus k term we are calculating for that k bus okay it will be y k i v i in the rth iteration okay so this is the formula of the gauss seidel method for finding the voltage at any bus so let us begin with the help of this formula so let us first set the iteration count set r is equal to 1 it will be the first iteration okay now we are having the value of v1 it is given in the problem okay if you refer that table go back to that table the voltage at this slack bus it is given 1.02 to the angle 0 degree okay so we will take this value 1.02 to the angle 0 degree okay now if you remember the gauss seidel method it says we have to start with the Uh, some assumption okay we have to assume some value uh, for what we are doing the calculation so we are doing the calculations for v2 and v3 okay so firstly let us assume this values okay so as we are assuming this values so i will put a post fix here as zero okay so this indicates that it is a assumed value okay let us assumed it to be 1 to the angle 0 degree okay so this type of the start in the iteration in the numerical method is called as flat voltage start okay so this is called as a flat voltage start or the flat voltage profile okay so we have assumed this values this is not going to be the same okay this is just the assumed value now with this assumed value we will use this formulas to get the actual values okay 
Now this value of v1 it will remain same in all the iteration okay so it will be like irrespective of the iteration its value will remain same okay because this is the voltage at the slack bus and the voltage at slack bus it, it is not going to change it will remain same okay so now let us do the calculation for voltage at bus 2 in the first iteration okay so as for the formula I will write it as 1 upon y22 in the bracket it will be p2 minus jq2 divided by v2 now we have to go for the previous value previous iteration value so it will be the zeroth iteration value and we have to take the conjugate of that then minus now you see you have to start with i and we have to go up to k minus 1 so k value is 2 okay so 2 minus 1 will be 1 only so we will get only one term here so that one term will be y21 that was a, a y k i term here okay then here we will get v1 okay as i said this value of the v1 will be iteration independent okay irrespective of any iteration its value will not going to change so whether you write here iteration count or not that doesn't matter okay specifically i'm not going to mention here then next term that is the another summation which is starting from k plus 1 so k value is 2 so 2 plus 1 will be the 3 so here we will get y 3 1 we will get here okay into v3 we will get here okay v3 we will get here okay and this v3 value it should be previous iteration value okay so let us just verify whether we have written the correct one or not it will be y k i okay so this value will be different okay it will not be y31 it will be y23 okay because k value is 2 okay and i value it will be k plus 1 that is the 2 plus 1 3 so y23 we will get here okay so now the formula is okay so now let us put the values of these things and we will solve this for v2 in the first iteration okay so v2 value in the first iteration it will be 1 upon y22 so if you recall y22 value it is minus j8 okay then p2 p2 is minus 0 0.25 and this uh, q2 is a minus 0 0.1 so that minus and this minus will become plus here so plus j 0 0.1 we will get here divided by this v2 in the assumed value okay this v2 naught so this we have to take the conjugate of that so 1 to the angle 0 degree so we have to take the conjugate of this then minus y21 minus y21 is j3 and this v1 it is nothing but 1.02 to the angle 0 degree then we have this minus 2 j minus y23 its value is i'll write these terms here it is j5 and this v3 naught we know it is 1 to the angle 0 degree okay so if we solve this okay just convert this uh, polar into the rectangular form and just do these calculations you just verify you will get this value here the first term 1 upon minus j8 will remain as it is here 1 to the angle 0 degree conjugate will remain 1 only okay 1 to the angle 0 degree if i convert it in the rectangular form it will become 1 plus j0 and that uh, conjugate will be 1 minus j0 so j0 is immaterial so only 1 will remain so that denominator we can uh, neglect so here we will get minus 0 0.25 plus j 0 0.1 okay here j3 into if you solve this it will be 1.02 plus j0 minus here we will get j5 into 1 plus j0 okay 
So if you solve this, you will get 0 point in the polar form first uh, I'll give you uh, what you will get minus 0 0.25 minus j 7.96 okay divided by this minus j8 this you will get okay for this square bracket you will get this value and this denominator will remain same okay if you convert this into the polar form so you will get here as 7.9639 to the angle here angle you will get minus 91.799 degree divided by it will be 8 to the angle minus 90 degree okay if you solve this this is in the polar form if you solve this and if you get this in the rectangular form firstly you will get it in rectangular form a polar form as 0 0.9955 to the angle minus 1.799 degree okay let us convert this into the rectangular form so you will get here as 0 0.9955 minus j 0 0.0312 so this value you are getting for voltage at bus 2 in the first iteration okay again if you recall the problem acceleration factor is given so we have to use that acceleration factor to find out the accelerated value of the voltage at bus 2 after this first iteration okay so for that acceleration factor we need to find the change in voltage at burst 2 in the first iteration okay to use that acceleration factor we need to find this change in voltage okay this change in voltage is nothing but voltage at burst 2 in the first iteration and voltage at burst 2 in the earlier iteration this will give you the change in voltage on the burst 2 in the first iteration so these values are v2 in the first iteration we are having here it will be 0 0.9955 minus j 0 0.0312 minus it was 1 plus j0 okay uh, just solve this and convert this in the rectangular form so you will get change in voltage at burst 2 after first iteration as minus 0 0.005 minus j 0 0.0312 okay now let us find the accelerated value okay so i can write here accelerated value of v2 okay so it will be v2 in the first iteration now i'm finding an accelerated value so i will mention here it as accelerated value so it can be calculated as v2 in the previous iteration okay earlier iteration plus alpha into that is acceleration factor into change in voltage in that iteration in the current iteration okay so v2 in the earlier iteration we know it is 1 plus j0 plus alpha it is given 1.6 then this change in voltage in first iteration we got it is minus 0 0.05 minus j 0 0.0312 okay you just solve this okay if you solve this you will get the value as 0 0.992 minus j 0 0.0499 okay so this is the accelerated value of the voltage after the first iteration okay so this is v2 after first iteration and it is 
accelerated value okay that is not the end here now we have to find for voltage at bus 3 in the first iteration okay so let us do that at bus 3 so this voltage at bus 3 in the first iteration it can be written with the help of formula it is y k k so k value is 3 so y 3 3 we will get here here we have p 3 minus j q 3 divided by v 3 in the earlier iteration we have to take the conjugate of that minus summation i going from 1 to k minus 1 okay so this is the term so directly we will write terms okay so here we will get the first term as y31 into v1 again as said v1 is independent of the iteration in any iteration its value will remain same so i'll not write any iteration here because its value will remain constant next term we'll get here y32 into v2 in the first iteration okay we have to go for k minus 1 the term so k is 3 3 minus 1 is 2 you have to go up to the second bus okay okay so we already got this value v2 1 we have already calculated this value we can directly use this value okay uh, then we have the another summation which is starting from k plus 1 k value is 3 3 plus 1 4 we don't have fourth bus here so formula will end here now we have to simply put the values here these values we can get the value of v3 uh, that is the voltage at burst 3 in the first iteration okay if i put this values of all these things so how we will uh, get this just see y33 is nothing but minus j9 again p3 is minus 0.6 again this q3 is minus 0.3 so that minus this minus will become plus plus 0.3 we will get here okay divided by v3 this is the assumed value okay it will be 1 plus j0 we have to take the conjugate of that minus y31 it is j4 v1 it is fixed it is 1.0 plus j0 then y23 y23 is j5 okay uh, i'll write these terms in the next below line because space is not there okay so here next term is j5 that is this y32 okay then this v21 okay we will use this accelerated value so here i'll write my 0.992 minus j 0.0 499 okay just solve this okay on solving this you just see you will get this value for this square bracket you will get minus 0 0.8495 minus j 8.74 divided by this term will be there minus j9 okay you just solve this you will get 0 0.971 minus j 0 0.0943 okay this is the value of the voltage at bus 3 in the first iteration but as the acceleration factor is given we have to find the accelerated value of the voltage at bus 3 after first iteration so to get this value again we need to find out this change in voltage in first iteration and it is nothing but voltage in the first iteration at that bus minus voltage in the earlier iteration on the same bus okay so it will be plus 971 minus j 0 0.0943 minus we have assumed a flat 
start okay so it will be 1 plus j0 okay if i solve this so this difference i'll get it as minus 0 0.029 minus j 0 0.0943 this will remain same okay so now the accelerated value of voltage at bus 3 the first iteration it will be voltage at bus 3 in the earlier iteration plus that acceleration factor into change in voltage on that bus in the same iteration so it will be 1 plus j0 plus 1.6 into this term so this term is minus 0 0.029 minus j 0 0.0943 okay so if you solve this okay on solving this you will get it as 0 0.9536 minus j 0 0.1509 okay so this is the voltage at bus 3 at the end of the first iteration and this is the accelerated value okay so we can summarize voltage at bus 1 after first iteration voltage at bus at the end of first iteration and voltage at bus 3 at the end of first iteration okay as said voltage at first bus is uh, independent of the iteration so its value is same 1.02 plus j0 okay v2 at the end of the first iteration it will be we have calculated that value accelerated value we have calculated so that accelerated value is 0.992 minus j 0.0499 and v3 we have just now calculated it is 0 0.9536 minus j 0 0.509 so these values are at the end of first iteration okay we are not supposed to find the values at the end of first iteration we have to find out the values of the voltages at bus 2 and bus 3 at the end of the two iteration okay so we have to go for one more iteration so let us do that let us start with second iteration okay so now in second iteration also the value of the voltage at bus 1 will remain in change okay so now directly we will find out v2 in the second iteration it will be same 1 upon y22 here we will write p2 minus j q2 divided by v2 in the first iteration will come here and we have to take the conjugate of that minus y21 v1 we will get here and minus that another term of the summation that is nothing but the k plus 1th term so k is 2 this k is 2 k plus 2 is 3 so we will get here y23 and v3 in the first iteration so this is the formula for finding the voltage at bus 2 in the second iteration so carefully write these values okay so if i write this so y22 is nothing but minus j8 just refer that y bus what we have calculated this p2 is minus 0 0.25 this q2 is minus 0 0.1 that minus this minus will become plus plus j 0 0.1 divided by okay so now v2 in the first iteration we have just calculated we'll use the accelerated value okay 0 0.992 here we will get 
जीरो पॉइंट नाइन नाइन टू ओके माइनस जे जीरो पॉइंट जीरो फोर नाइन नाइन एंड वी हैव टू टेक द कॉन्जुकेट ऑफ दिस कॉन्जुकेट मीन्स सिंपली टेक द अपोजिट ऑफ दिस साइन इफ इट इज माइनस इयर मेक इट प्लस इफ इट इज प्लस इयर मेक इट माइनस ओके माइनस दिस वाई टू वन इट इज सिंपली जे थ्री एंड दिस टर्म इज सेम दट इज वन पॉइंट दिस वी वन ओके इट विल रिमेन सेम वन पॉइंट जीरो टू प्लस जे जीरो एंड दिस टर्म वाई टू थ्री इट इज जे फाइव एंड वी थ्री इन द फर्स्ट इटरेशन वी हैव कैलकुलेटेड विल राइट दिस वैल्यू इट इज जीरो पॉइंट नाइन फाइव थ्री सिक्स माइनस जे जीरो पॉइंट वन फाइव जीरो नाइन ओके सो वी हैव टू सॉल्व दिस ओके सो फर्स्ट यू जस्ट सॉल्व दिस फ्रैक्शन देन वी विल सॉल्व दिस एंड वी विल गेट द सोल्यूशन फॉर दिस स्क्वायर ब्रैकेट देन वी विल डिवाइड दैट विथ माइनस जे एट टू गेट दिस वैल्यू ओके सो हियर लेट एस डू दैट वन अपॉन माइनस j8 here convert this in the polar form to do the calculations okay so here if i uh, convert this in polar form it will become 0.26926 to the angle 158.2 degree divided by Zero point nine nine three two angle two point eight eight degree. Okay, uh, if you solve this, you will get here minus j three point zero six. Again minus j four point seven six eight. And minus zero point seven five four five. These terms. Okay. Now on solving this uh, square bracket, you will get solve this square bracket and divide that with uh, this minus one upon minus j eight. You will get at the end result as zero point nine six four three minus j. Zero point one two five. Okay, so it is the voltage at burst two at the end of the second iteration. But this is not the answer because we have to find the accelerated value since acceleration factor is given. So before we get the accelerated value, first find out the change in voltage at burst two at the end of the second iteration. It will be change in voltage. At burst two, in the second iteration minus voltage at burst two in the first iteration. Okay, so we got this value. It is zero point nine six four three minus J zero point one twenty five. Again minus we'll use that accelerated value nine nine two. Minus J zero point zero four nine nine. Okay, if you solve this, you will get minus zero point zero two seven seven minus J zero point zero seven five one. Okay, with the help of this, we can get. The voltage at burst two at the end of second iteration, accelerated value, it will be voltage at burst two in the first iteration. That will be the accelerated value we'll use here, plus this acceleration factor into change in voltage in that iteration. Okay, so with this, this is this value is zero point. Nine nine two minus J zero point zero four nine nine plus 
alpha is 0.6 into this change in voltage we have calculated minus 0 0.0277 minus j 0 0.0754 okay on solving this you will get the value as 0 0.9477 minus j 0 0.170 this is the voltage at burst at the end of second iteration accelerated value okay so we got the voltage at burst 2 now similarly we have to do for voltage at burst 3 okay at burst 3 it will be the voltage at burst 3 in the second iteration it will be 1 upon y33 e3 minus jq3 divided by v3 in the first iteration take the conjugate of that minus y31 in the v1 minus y32 into v2 in the second iteration okay next term will not be there because k value is 3 so 3 plus 1 will be 4 we don't have fourth bus so the formula will end here okay let's put these values and solve this to get this value of v3 at the end of the second iteration so these values are y33 is nothing but minus j9 okay p3 is nothing but minus 0 0.60 and this q3 is minus 0 0.3 it will become minus minus it will become plus 0 0.3 divided by v3 in the first iteration we got we got it as 0 0.9536 minus j 0 0.01509 this value we got we have to take the conjugate okay next y31 it is simply j4 and y12 its value is same 1.02 plus j0 then we have this y32 y32 is nothing but j5 and v2 in the uh, second iteration we have just calculated that 0 0.9477 0 0.9477 minus j0.17 we got okay uh, J 0 0.17 we got okay just solve this okay if you solve this you will get the value as just verify this you should get this value 0 0.93496 minus j 0 0.1573 you will get this value if you solve this okay this is the voltage at burst 3 in the second iteration but we are not interested in this value since acceleration factor is given we have to find the accelerated value to get the accelerated value again we need to find the change in voltage at bus 3 in the second iteration okay so this change in voltage will be change in voltage at bus 3 voltage at bus 3 in the second iteration minus voltage at bus 3 in the first iteration okay so voltage at bus in the second iteration we got 0 0.93496 minus 0. j 0 0.1573 we got v1 in the first iteration it is here it is 0 0.9536 minus j 0 0.0 1509 okay if you solve this you will get the value of here as minus 0 0.01864 minus j 0 0.0064 okay so with this the accelerated value we can find it as v3 that is the voltage at bus 3 at the end of second iteration 
accelerated value it will be voltage at burst 3 in the first iteration plus alpha into change in voltage second iteration okay so this value is this is 0 0.9536 minus j 0 0.01509 1 1.6 into minus 0 0.01864 minus j 0 0.00 okay if you solve this you just verify you will get the value as 0. 9237 minus j 0.16114. Okay, so if I summarize the bus voltages at the end of second iteration, it will be v1 will remain same okay 1.02 plus j0 v2 will be we have calculated this value 0 0.9477 minus j0.170 and we have calculated v3 0 0.9237 minus 0 0.16114 okay all these are calculated at the end of second iteration so we will mention your iteration count as well so this is how you can solve the load flow problem using the gauss method for the given power system thank you very much